Hey, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch with a mic. Uh, we're back today with Abzan Maverick. Uh, the big difference with this list is that I'm not playing Gutter Teague because I just didn't feel like Teague was that relevant right now. Uh, combo is mainly Doomsday. Uh, Bant decks aren't really playing Terminus. Uh, so I dropped him. I took him out, which feels a little bit tough. Hey, Jittery, welcome. And Muffin Man, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of sacred to drop the cow that is Gadok Teague, but I think the click to Ufin and Deafening Silence is fine for those decks. And to have the extra space in the sideboard is quite nice. So I'm going to try out uh, this Kaya Ghost Assassin, which uh, I think is a great card for, for Maverick in the sideboard. Really allows you to punish some of the, uh, the more greedy for color decks uh, in a, a non-creature based way, which is really nice. You can do things like Reset, Knight of Autumn, or Plague Engineer. Uh, you can get rid of tokens, which is pretty cool. Uh, and she's just a little bit hard to kill. She also just replaces herself straight away, which is nice. Um, it causes a, a small, amount of, small amount of card advantage. So I really like Kaya. Um, the other change I believe we made since the last time we played was adding in the extra uh, removal in part to exile on the sideboard, just because Merc Tide is, is just that good in all honesty. Um, you don't have the luxury, sadly, of always having prismatic ending for the smaller creatures of Blue Red Delva. So sometimes you do use your swords on things like Delva or DRC. And then it comes time to deal with Merktide and you're left with prismatic ending. It can feel pretty rough. So having the extra parts in the board is, is really nice, but that's about it. Let's see how this goes. Um, yeah, this is a new setup as well. I actually moved over to OBS from OBS Studios. So hopefully it sounds okay. It looks okay. If you have any feedback, let me know. I am more than happy to change things up. Go to gameplay. Nice. Play league. Why the change? Um, I found out about some pretty sketchy stuff that Streamlabs OBS was doing. Uh, yeah, they kind of took a lot of what OBS does without really giving OBS the credit for it. Um, and yeah, kind of overtook the OBS brand, I guess, without really reaching out, it seems. Um, OBS recently on Twitter actually came out and said there's been a lot of sort of shady things happening with Streamlabs OBS. So uh, I wanted to, yeah, move back to the original uninstall Streamlabs. And I also just like that it's pretty basic. Um, the one thing that I like about Streamlabs OBS is like the integration with Twitch and like Twitch chat and things like that all in one sort of window, but I, I think you can actually do that with OBS as well, which is nice. Um, and I find that most YouTube tutorials on OBS as well uh, do a good mix of Streamlabs and regular OBS. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I'll see if I can find it. Hmm. They did reach a path, however, so that's really good. Ah, oh, wow. Hey, Beepot Online. Beepot Online is another Brisbane streamer that uh, you should definitely check out, especially if you like modern. Uh, I believe Beepot came up with a deck that was recently played by Mengu and also the team over at, I'm gonna say Star City Games versus series. I think that's it. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Rashad is also a very good legacy player. Like some death and taxes, which is nice. Very cool to see. Hey, Dan the Man. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I've seen a lot of lists playing Questing Beast, but how do we feel about Yashan? He seems super impactful in legacy. Yashan's definitely interesting. I saw Yashan got a lot of play when Green White Reclaimer was a bit of a deck. Um, I always felt like Yashan was really good if you could get him out before, or get it out before turn four, but it's a little bit late. The nice thing about, um, Questing Beast, pretty nice hand, I'm pretty happy to keep this. Uh, we have Mana for Days, we have Script Ranger for Blue Red Delva, Mana Acceleration, Interaction in Scoos and Endurance for the Graveyard, Wastelands to take them off lands, so pretty sweet hand. Um... Yeah, Questing Beast is just sick because it gets through little blockers like Baleful Strix, it gets through things like 
Maze of Ith. Um, it kills walkers while also pressuring your opponent's life total, which is really nice. Um, it can be saved with Caracas, which is quite nice. It can also be removed by Caracas, but... Um, what are we looking at? Prismatic Vista. Most likely a, a Bant or Blue-White X deck. So something like main deck uh, back basics would be pretty pretty huge. I think I'm happy just to go forest into into birds here. That seems pretty good. Yeah, getting under things like Ice Fang, um, even Mentor. Like if you have Mentor or Mentor tokens, there's there's times where Questing Beast can just get there, which is quite nice. Hey Sterling, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Beast is just really fun to play with as well. There's like an excitement element to it, which I, I really enjoy. This is fine. So this Wasteland probably not having a great role in this matchup. I'm pretty happy just to play the Scrib Ranger at instant speed here. Um, playing Scoos and getting a bounce by like Teferi is pretty rough. I think Scoos as well I want to play when I actually have some mana open to start eating things like Swords to Plushes. Hey Poff. They're just going to pass here. Well. Scrib also really nice because it does allow us to play around back to basics a little bit. And there's the, uh, the big boy. Um... There is a world where you don't want to show Wasteland before they fetch, but seeing this only gets basics, there's no real downside to playing the Wasteland here. Uh, I think we'll just go with Windswept. Hold up Endurance and just attack with Scrub. Kind of a free attack, which is nice. It can't be blocked by Ice Fang, which is awesome. Yeah, the new Lion looks very good for Death and Taxes, especially as a Stoneforge and Recruiter target. Uh, there haven't been too many cards that I've been really liking for Maverick. I do think the the green land that like cycles to, to destroy things is very, uh, very good. And we'll probably see play in, in Maverick as, as like a one of. The thing is that you can't really fetch for it in Maverick because it just comes into play if you do via traditional elements like, um, like we've seen in the past. Uh, through Night of the Reliquary, but I do like it with Loam, so. Reckon the containment construct can break LED? That's a very interesting one. I feel like LED is already broken, <laughs> uh, but it, it would be interesting. But then you're playing those cards in the deck as well, so there's a, a world where is it worth, uh, worth that. I am going to play Endurance here just to keep some pressure going. And at least if they spend like a snap into swords here, it's not going at the uh, the questing beast. Hey, punishing waterfalls! Very cool to see you. Hope you're doing well, Thalia. Okay. So we currently have a. Uh, I'm gonna say a four turn clock because they're most likely gonna fetch over the next four turns. I don't want to build out too much into the board. I like attacking first. We have swords for something like an Endurance or an Ice Fang. But they have nothing. I didn't expect nothing. Hmm. Hey, Fujita. Too kind. Good to see you. Ah, Fujita, you gotta, you gotta remind me of the card you wanted me to talk about because I, I will talk about it at some point, definitely. Um, I think Thalia is okay here. Again, I don't want to overcommit, but I think we're three, four, five, six turns this into a two-turn clock with these fetches, so I think it is worth playing Thalia here. Just resolves. That's really interesting. But it has four cards in hand, and they just have just passed back. I was thinking perhaps we could see like brainstorm a determinus, but. Nothing. They do show red, so they are Jeskai. Hmm. Second Thalia. Pretty happy just to attack again. 
I don't really want to show the beast until I have to. Because there's a world where they like Supreme Verdict us. Bolt here is fine. Hey Vegeta, welcome to the Zenith. Too kind for the Prime sub. Uh, this is fine because we do have the second Thalia. Snap Bolt would be tough. But we can't do too much there anyway. And luckily they bolted the card that we actually have two of. Gonna untap Endurance, return the Savannah. I don't think I want to play the screws here. I could play screws and then hold up, uh, like, they can't snap bolt, but if they didn't snap bolt there on, like, the Scrib Ranger, I don't think they have snap in hand. So I'm pretty happy just to pass back again. Hmm. Interesting game so far. They really haven't had a whole lot. Just another land. Ramming up. Definitely interesting. Any tips for staying in such good shape? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say uh, get a routine going. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be uh, walking for 30 minutes after work. It could be walking for 30 minutes before work. Um, plan your meals. That's a big one. Planning meals is a, is a really good tip because then you don't, in the, you don't get in the case where you just have nothing and you go out and get fast food, which I've definitely been there. But yeah, I think, uh, I think routine is a, a good start. I'm just going to attack first and, and do stuff second main. Get a dog. Yeah, get a dog is a really good one. So they do have snap. That's going to be okay. They're going to target the bolt. Couldn't really play around this anyway, because we could play the snap. They play the snap caster in response and then give the, the bolt flashback. Um, I'm going to allow them to block if they want to. I don't really want a sword to snap here. Hmm. Okay. They are going to block. Okay. Hey, Toxic, uh, you're going to get removed. <laughs> uh, ban. Done. Uh, okay. So they're at nine, essentially seven. I kind of like here just floating, untapping endurance, returning this. Playing forest. Uh, playing scoos. I could also use the wasteland here. I don't mind that. And then holding up three. Uh, green. Uh, and then just to play around Bolt, I am just going to eat the Snap right now. And also, I guess they have double fetch. So I could just wait for, I can actually wait for their turn. Because we have our uh, two Thales in the bin, we can actually respond to the Bolt after the first uh, activation, which is quite nice. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. That's pretty sweet. Four, four. Okay. They unlikely have two mountain. That's very true. That's a good one, HC Fox. I did not think of that. Um. I mean, I'm pretty happy just to play the... Yeah, they didn't have anything, which is really tough for them, but... I think there, again, I'm happy just to swing with lethal, like not overcommit and play the questing beast. Maybe even just play the ramen up second main, get back a land, get like dried up going because dried up is pretty good here when they're at such a life. So pretty nice. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup seeing that we didn't really see anything, but I am going to put them on Jeskai control. So I like the Kaya. Um, I don't mind a choke. Uh, I really like the endurances. Uh, we saw a lot of basics, so I'm going to cut on a knight. Hey, Jerry. Too kind. 17 months is very solid. I was running days. <laughs> uh, so I recently, actually a few minutes ago, put up my Bant uh, Maverick Donation List League on YouTube, uh, which is really cool. And yeah, I guess spoilers, but we got to do something that I've always wanted to do, 
which is uh, <laughs> days at Thassa's Oracle uh, and, and get the win uh, playing Maverick, which is just uh, a great feeling. Um, I am going to bottom a Wasteland. Uh, Collector Oof here isn't doing too much, and I don't mind taking out a Mana Dork. It depends if they're on a uh, Supreme Verdict or Terminus or some sort of sweeper. Because otherwise, I don't mind the Mana Dorks trading with like Prismatic Endings and Swords. So it's definitely an interesting one. Yeah, pretty funny. Pretty funny that they are. Uh, they didn't, like, in, in game one, they went for Cavern Souls, and in game three there, they didn't go for the Cavern Souls line, which I, I found pretty, pretty interesting. Um, it could be Cradle. I also don't mind the thought of having a Force of Vigor, but seeing that Jeskai, I don't really need the Force. It's really just back to basics, but we do have a few ways to answer that. Choke isn't that great, but... It can be a nuisance. Just having a quick think. Hmm. I'm pretty happy just to make some like slight changes and see how game two goes. And if there is a game three, we can adapt the sideboard a little bit better. But yeah, tough one for our opponent. Like they cast Prismatic Ending, Swords of Plowshares, that's about it. <laughs> um, this hand is pretty three drop heavy, but having turn two Thali is pretty nice. And also Scrib Ranger to make sure we get the third land is pretty good. Also have some t sweet top decks of like just land number three naturally, or a Mana Dork would be cool. Opponent goes to six cards. Pretty happy to lead on Thalia next turn. Especially seeing we have multiple in the deck. And I think taxing them when the Vermelta 6 is quite nice. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's really nice to not worry about Ragavan. Another another island is exactly what I want to be seeing with that choke in the deck. So they chose to not shuffle. Um, I think I'm happy here to go for Forest and Savannah because at least with Back to Basics, the Scrib Ranger can pick up the Savannah and replay it. Nice. This means no back to basics, no Teferi next turn. They also don't have a land in play that deals with the Thalia. They also don't play around Caracas, which is interesting. Um, I can make use of my mana here by playing Scrib Ranger. And then uh, untapping Thalia, returning the Savannah. Playing Savannah and then playing the, the bird. All right. No end step spell. Tundra. Wow, a wasteland target. I didn't expect that. Endurance. Um, I'll attack first. Hey, Elo, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you in chat, as always. So now we have some options. We essentially have uh, two mana, four mana, because we can use the bird and script shenanigans. I think I want to go for knight, because if knight survives, especially as a four four, meaning it can't be bolted, and we get rid of this tundra, that's a pretty huge play. I think that's better than holding up. Uh, anything else? Counter spell. Okay. It does feel like verdict, but.
But thankfully, since they counterspelled that, I assume they don't have a verdict in hand. Um, I think here I'm actually happy to untap bird, return this. Uh, play Savannah. Play Scoos. I did fiddle with the stream overlay. I did fiddle with the stream overlay. I actually switched back from, yeah, Streamlabs OBS to uh, normal OBS. Oh, is this just Force of Will? Wow. Nuts. That is more than fine. I put it down to two cards. No red mana either. Land. A verdict here would be pretty good because then we lose our yeah, extra land here. Um, I can't do anything about that. Too kind, Jerry. Too kind. All right, come on. Ah, so close. Rough. All right. That is a spell. Oh, actually, if they cast Snapcast Mage. No, just Hardcast Force. Okay. How am I finding Legacy without Monkey? I would say the general metagame hasn't changed. I think Dex is still playing as much removal, but it is really nice not to have to worry about it. That's probably the, the big thing. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, having to try to play around it can be pretty tough. I'm happy here just to hold up Endurance. They're gonna fetch. Interesting. Maybe for red mana? So what is this with red mana? Like a from the ashes? Surely not. Expressive iteration. That's pretty good. Hey Nepal, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what you play in Legacy? Please be Snapcaster. Oof, you love to see it. Let it resolve. It's gone for Ponder. Oh, no counter spell. That's huge. Nice, that feels really good. Interesting. Back to basics, there it is. All right. Hey Panda, welcome. I guess there's a world now where uh, endurancing ourselves is okay to get the Scrib Ranger back in the deck. It's a pretty nice draw. <laughs> It also increases the clock, which is pretty fantastic. Panda, it should. That's very interesting. Hey Nick from the US, very cool. Pre-COVID I played Four Color Loam and have been itching to play Knights again. Yeah, uh, I would love to see a uh, like an Abzan Loam version. I know that uh, Ozymandias, AKA Matt Vuk, AKA great player, has been toying around with a uh, an Abzan sort of Loam list, which looks really solid. They chose to shuffle off the Ponder, which is pretty huge for us. Savannah's pretty nice here, just allows us to hold up another Endurance. I'm not gonna use the Sword yet either. They're blocking. Sure. We have all the time in the world, thankfully. Opponent up to two cards. And nothing. Okay. The question here is, do I want to play another Endurance? 
I kind of do. I kind of do. And the question is, do I want to target myself? The main reason to target myself is to get Scrib Ranger back in the deck because this can allow me to uh, untap my, my lands essentially underneath the back to basics, which is quite nice. It does make the knight smaller, which means the knight dies to a bolt, but I think that's irrelevant right now. I think we're winning this game through endurances, so I think in the off chance, I'd rather just uh, yeah, get these back in the deck. All right. This also means that next turn, they have to have like a, a pretty good turn because uh, we have two lethal threats now. There it is. <laughs> Snail mail, two kind panda, two kind. And that's gonna be it. Very interesting games. Usually Jeskai has a, a lot easier time against this sort of deck. Prismatic endings, sorts of plowshares, Teferi bounce, back to basics, Jace. Um, I think my opponent just got pretty unfortunate with their draws, so. Always uh, happy to take the win. Um, and I will actually update my All right, uh, insert deck later. Played against mid range, uh, just guy control. Uh, we were on the draw because we saw the prismatic. Nice. Actually, keep that up there. Um, Jean Carlo. Bilotch. Has Ragavan ban really made that much of an impact on the format? I think uh, from a player perspective, it's taken a lot of stress out of the format, uh, but I wouldn't say it's changed the format in regards to what decks are still top dog. Like I think that uh, Blu-ray Delver is still top dog, but I, I don't think the ban was necessarily to make Delver less powerful. I think it was just to eliminate the unfun gameplay that Ragavan can have on decks, which I think did in a way stifle Blue Red Delver's power level in the metagame because Ragavan could just win games that are nowhere. But at the same time, uh, in my opinion, I think Delver is very strong right now, if not more. And I think that's because it, it's got that consistency that it just lives off because Ragavan is very feast or famine. You don't know what it's going to hit. It could just hit lands all the time and you've got a, you know, a 10 turn clock. But then otherwise, you know, you could hit Thassa's Oracle, Thassa's Oracle and the Doomsday opponent just can't do anything. So um, I love that Ragavan's gone, unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah, I think there's still some, some things that need to be done. And I, I do like uh, that they did say that they're going to be looking out over the next few weeks to see how it goes. Uh, hey, Snab, do you stream for a living? <laughs> I do not stream for a living, uh, but I do enjoy streaming and I'm currently on a break from work. Uh, take some time off, so got a bit more time for it. Uh, this hand is pretty sweet. We have Green Sun Zenith for Dried Arbor, turn two library and Wasteland, or turn two Knight, turn two library and Swords. Questing Beast for a, a pretty good keep. So as a six with that Questing Beast, I'll definitely keep this. So pretty awesome. Dude, I have an extra ticket for Interpol and Tycho in May. Fly to Cleveland and it's yours. Don't. <laughs> Do not. Do not. If, any, if anyone who doesn't know, these albums behind me are Tycho's, who is a uh, an artist out of uh, California and a very, very good... Oh my gosh. Don't say that. I did see that, uh, you know, uh, people who are vaccinated for international travel can start traveling pretty well. So that would be a, a pretty cool way to see Tycho live. I've seen him once before. All right, uh, we're just gonna get Savannah here and go for Dried Arbor. Nice. Yeah, I think one of the big things that Ragavan did, ooh, pedal. Oh, interesting, interesting. 
Um, opponent here most likely holding up crop rotation. When I was playing, uh, actually, I believe this player is a well-known green-white player. Um, and I think here I'm happy to hold up the wasteland. I don't want to throw the wasteland into a crop. So I'd rather play a little bit defensively with this. And at least if they tap out for like Night of the Reliquary next turn, we have the swords and then we can wasteland safely. But yeah, the big thing that Ragavan did for Blue Red Delva was that it allowed them to play Expressive Iteration on turn two and still make a land drop off that Expressive Iteration, which is just, just insane. Why is he playing Petal? <laughs> I played Petal. I played one Petal uh, as an Urza Saga target because a lot of the time I wanted that extra mana, but I didn't have the land in hand uh, to get a Mox Diamond. So I played a Petal. So I, I, I see the reasoning because a lot of the times I just wanted that one extra one extra mana, but yeah. Oh, this might actually be uh, Rainbow Depths playing a one-off Yavimaya. Because I also played a one-off Yavimaya because it just gives you those earlier wins of, uh, you know, just turn three Yavimaya, Dark Depth stage go off, which is cool. But Rainbow's pretty sweet here. Uh, it definitely means I'm pretty happy just to pay probably all, yeah, uh, I'm definitely paying for all of this. Just gonna hold up the wasteland. Yeah, I'd rather hold up wasteland than swords because, um, like, not of this world is, is a big answer to the swords, whereas wasteland's a little bit harder for them to interact with. This makes me less angry. Yeah, sorry, Mapson. <laughs> for anyone who listens to podcasts and wants to find uh, a new legacy or modern podcast. Definitely check out the Dark Depths podcast, which Expedition Map is a co-host on. Very cool podcast. I very much enjoy it uh, on my my days off, going for a walk, listening to some uh, some good content. I think we're just playing Ramen Up here, but it's interesting. Um. Hmm. So if you try to wasteland the stage, they can just copy planes. I think we just want the green suns here. Yeah, I kind of like do nothing as well. I could just play Questing Beast. I don't mind that, just to get pressure going. And by playing Questing Beast, I can still hold up Wasteland and Wasteland with Knight. I think that's pretty strong. I can sack the planes in response to them with the uh, the stage. That's very correct. I think we have enough defense here to play the, the Questing Beast to have double Wasteland or Wasteland and Swords. And typically Rainbow plays uh, Caracas in the sideboard. I was playing it in the main deck during uh, Ragavan days, but I think this is okay. That's really cool. I, I have seen a few Maverick players play Spirit of Labyrinth in the deck, which is really nice. It's it's a shame that you can't search for it, but otherwise it's uh, it's really strong. So this is pretty interesting. They're gonna copy the wasteland. I could make them use the pedal here to crop something away. And to be fair, if I target the stage here, at least then uh, they can't have like both pieces. Like if I target the Yavamai here and they go and get depths, then that's a little bit unfortunate. I could also just let them trade the stage here for the Wasteland down the line. So actually, I don't mind this. If they want to sack the Thespian stage to deal with the Wasteland, we get to hit another land anyway. So I think we're in a, a fine position. Uh, 
But yeah, Spirit's nice. Spirit does have a little bit of a dis synergy with Sylvan Library, but otherwise it's uh yeah, pretty good. Hex Mage is fine. They've already played a land for turn. I think here I just like uh getting the knight online. Caracas is interesting. Cradle's pretty interesting as well. But Hmm. I don't mind a fetch either because if the Sylvan Library is just a, a blank, then I can just use that to, to fetch away things. We also have a pretty fast clock here as well. Archon's really cool. I think the issue is against the, the, at least what I've come into problems with is that Archon is quite good against combo decks, but you really want that sort of effect on turn one or two, and you can't always rely on mana dogs to get out Archon on turn two. So Deafening Silence is really nice because it's just turn one, uh, and it's just there, and then you can start building out your creatures. But uh, maybe in a deck where you played a few more mana dogs, like up to six, I could see it. Yeah, Ranger makes this uh this pretty good as well. Uh, all right, sixteen. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty happy here to go and get Scrib Ranger. Which is nice because uh, Scrib Ranger with Yavimai in play means I can save uh, like Wasteland, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, I think the, the, the hand from me was pretty insane against this deck. And then also just having a, a pretty nice matchup anyway is, is also strong. Rainbow Depths. Oof isn't really worth it. I don't think Thalia's are worth it either. I do like the parts. I don't mind the Engineers. Force is also quite nice for Pithy Needle. Could see an Endurance coming out. Knight of Autumn's good, Grist is pretty good, Skoos. Beast is nice, they're just really closing out games pretty fast. How has Grist been? Grist has been really nice. It's the top deck that I really want against control decks. Um, it's also really nice to be able to find removal off Green Sun Zenith that actually is quite good. Um, you can also set it up with Sylvan Library so you know what you're putting into the bin, which is really cool. And probably the most... Uh, like powerful aspect of it is that in game one, if you have collector oof against elves, you're now turning on oof to be removal, which is quite nice. So it actually gives these cards a roll. So I really like that. That means that yeah, grist kind of gives your dead cards uh, a bit of a, a bit of benefit, which is really cool. So grist has been really nice. Even like, you know, late game mana dogs, turning those into removal for a Merktide region is pretty sweet. <laughs> And then also it gives the deck reach to deal with Planeswalkers, which is huge as well. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's been like uh, archetype defining, but it is a really nice reason to run black and Maverick, which is awesome. One more card. It could just be endurance, but I do like that like endurance can buy a turn if needed, with, uh, with Reach. Why is it called Maverick? There's a few different stories, but I believe the one is that the original creator of the deck, Luis, uh, played with the uh, handle uh, Maverick with an at sign as their MTGO name when they came up with it. So 
that's it. It could be a dork, but I really like the ability to like turn to library and hold up sword or wasteland. Quick think, quick think. I think it might just be a dork to be fair. I think that might just be it. Also cutting a noble there, not a bird. Um, an interesting hand. We don't have white mana, which is pretty huge. And something like a turn one pith needle on wasteland kind of just neuters this hand. So uh, it really depends if my opponent thinks that they have to go into more like more of a mid range plan, which is probably not correct because Maverick just mid ranges so well. I think my opponent just has to go hard and fast. And I don't think this hand beats a hard and fast deck because they most likely either have yeah, they most likely have a, a needle hand. So I'm pretty happy to mulligan this. It also sucks if we don't draw white mana. And I don't think we can rely on like a turn three Sylvan Library draw to find white mana and still be in the game. So pretty nice hand. We'll keep this and bottom the questing beast. I feel like, yeah, I think it's the weakest card here because Green Suns is just a copy. We also have an answer to a Pithy Needle here, which is nice. Also plays around like Jurass Effects. Land, pass. All right. Happy to get mana online. And go from there. Avog. Inquisition, sure. This is another big reason to bring the Plague Engineers because Safekeeper can be pretty tough to uh, try to beat. Wasteland's pretty interesting here. <clears throat> I think I want to just get a Birds of Paradise here. However, is library better than Bob? That's a big one. Um, I do like that Bob doesn't die to like Swords to Plowshares, Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt. They're like the, the big three, but um, it is pretty tough. Maverick does have a pretty high curve. So in like a, uh, like the version that Ozymandy has played, I don't mind uh, how they did their version with uh, like, Mox Diamonds and like a few Night of the Real Aquarius, but a, a, a lower-ish curve. So it's definitely a uh, different. Here, I'm just gonna de develop my mana, get Birds of Paradise, and then hold up Wasteland because Wasteland can't be beaten by Safekeeper, but Caracas, of course, can. So also means the next time we can play Caracas and then just Green Suns for a night as well. I'd rather keep the, the Wasteland defensively than go after their mana here as well. But yeah, I would love to see a list with Bob. It obviously saw play in, in older styles of, of Dark Maverick and was like a big reason why you would run black. I guess another nice thing is that Bob gets around like a uh, Hull Breacher effects. Ghost Court is interesting here as well because if they Ghost Quarter us, Another safekeeper. I think we actually want the mana. We don't want to ghost quarter them, uh, wasteland them back. Come on, plague. Another wasteland. Okay. I guess that's quite nice. Hmm. 
Hmm. I could also just hold up uh, Endurance here. End step Endurance, holding up double Wasteland, and then Green Suns for Grist and start trying to, to hit these Safe Keepers. Because if we already have Wastelands in hand and Caracas, and Knight's only a 2-2, it's not the greatest threat. Have a quick look at the deck list again. I think it might just be Grist. Yeah. I do want to hold up double Wasteland though. So I'm not going to attack here. Hey Jax, welcome. Zenith Ramen Up is quite nice. Um, they could have brought in Surgical. To take out Wastelands. They also have like Bajookabog. Uh, Needle's going to be pretty good. But Needle's not too bad because what we can do is Endurance ourselves, put Knight of Autumn back into our deck and then Green Suns for it to take out the Needle. So that is going to be okay. There's Depths. This is Hexmage. Two mana. Maybe Sylvan Scrying. Black, black, one. Crop floating two. Um, yes. At least we have a little bit of time here. We have the Caracas to deal with one land. We have the Endurance to block and also the Bird to block. So we can't play around like uh, Sejiri Step. But otherwise we're, we're good to go. So cast this. Target us to put back the Knight of Autumn. So we can't currently bounce the Lage because of the Sylvan Safekeepers. But here we get to... We have a, we have a few options. Um, and I think we're going we're gonna to come out on top, which is nice. Because we can use 4 mana uh, to Green Suns for Knight of Autumn. To take out the Needle. And then we can waste on their two lands. Uh, we can also hold up Caracas, which is pretty good. So there's definitely a few things we can do here. They have one card in hand. So the two cards that I don't want to see uh, in all of this is land and crop rotation, because crop for just Sejiri step just gets there. So the question is, do I want to double wasteland or do I want to hold up Caracas? I, th I think we're going for... Hmm. Uh, Not of This World's also pretty good. Yeah. I think it's Double Strip and Chump, yeah. Uh, so let's play the Caracas then. Caracas kind of does the same thing as Wasteland though. So that's pretty interesting. Step does open them to swords in a way because they can respond to... We can respond to the ETB, but they'll still have the safekeepers in play. Um, we have a lot of time here, so... I think it's better to Caracas the Lage than to Wasteland a land. Because Wastelanding the land puts them down a land and us down a land. But Caracas only puts them down a land, which is quite nice. Hmm. 
Yeah. There's also the world where we can swords our own endurance. So we could hold up the Caracas. There's also a world where we can just swords our own endurance now. I think we start off with Caracas. They suck a land, sure. Now we can pass. There's definitely a few lines here, but I feel like they all work out, which is nice. Because now we get to block with endurance. Then most likely if they don't have an out here, Ghost Court of the Caracas, which isn't the worst. We have things like Ramanap to get it back. Oh, they have the natural step. Uh, this is still fine. Cool. I guess in that case, we swords the Knight of Autumn to go up to 21 and then just have double blockers here. I don't think like not being able to fetch is an issue. No, so sadly if we uh, if we respond to the step trigger with swords, they can then sack, sack lands with safekeeper to give a shroud. Ah, oh, classic. Okay, now yeah, okay. I actually didn't pick up on that. Yeah, now we can actually get pro because it can't be it can't be targeted with safekeeper. Which I'm pretty happy to do. It does give my opponent a lot of time, but I think sorting our own creature, then trying to find a way out of Merit Lage with losing the Caracas is just a pretty tough one, so. They do go to 37, but we do have a bit of a clock, which is nice. I guess they could have not of this world. This is the reason not to swords here is not of this world. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even want to look now because not of this world is a card we've been talking about.
Yeah, I totally forgot that uh, sorting our own creature is also a line to get around not of this world. But, ah, uh, they're tanking. Surely if they had it, they would just like snap it off and just go to game three. So I feel like they're... I, I, I don't think they're slow rolling. I think they're trying to... Okay, well they're just gonna concede, which is tough. Yeah, opponent guessed it was a, a source of plowshares, so tough one. But nice to come out. I think that uh yeah, green white or green white X Maverick has a really nice matchup against any sort of depth deck, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, nice way to start the league. Yeah, we also have the plow our self line, um, which does keep us alive through another this world. But if they then ghost quarter the Caracas, we do have like limited options to find. Um, but I I do like that even though you give them twenty life there, you do just deal with the the twenty twenty. Yeah, really tough matchup for for Rainbow to be to be fair. Definitely not an easy one. Hey Zon, thanks for the follow. Hope you're well. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? If you like bananas. Mm. Bananas? One of the best GP snacks. You're from Italy? Very cool. Italy has a, a pretty nice eternal scene. Banana shakes are the way to go. There we go. Ice, cacao powder, banana, almond milk, peanut butter. So good. Uh, I'm from Australia, but I enjoy Italian food. So I feel like we got a, a connection there. I've also been to Florence and, uh, and Rome. Pretty nice. Oh, don't forget the honey. Oh, I should try it with honey. All right. Up against Light Walker. Uh, and this hand's pretty sweet. Yeah. Like three drops on turn two. Green suns for anything else. Pretty happy to keep this. <laughs> but how is Italy's banana scene? Snow covered mountain pass. Most likely Jeskai again. Happy to go for a basic. And play bird. No bolt. It's pretty nice. There's a saga. Oh, this could be painter. Okay. Interesting. Well, at least here we can... Uh, just Knight of Autumn the land, all right? That's the best thing we can do. I could get Collector Oof off Green Suns, but I think taking them off the Saga here is just too much value. Okay. Brayer's Apprentice. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I could grist it, but then they can just welder it unless I also endurance as well. How do I feel about green suns for ooze here? And eat the great furnace to turn off this welder. Definitely interesting. Hmm. 
Collector Oof does turn off this as well. But being a 2-3 body is just a little bit annoying. Hmm. They're also currently only on one mana. And really rely on this great furnace. If both targets are still legal as this ability resolves, that player sacrifices and returns the artifact. Interesting. So I assume I just want to endurance in, in response to Welder being activated. I don't just want to do it now. It's actually a really tough one. I don't mind land for Dried Arbor and then hold up Endurance and then next turn we can play Grist and trade the Dried Arbor away for most likely this. And then maybe get a Scavenging Ooze going. Knight's also pretty nice because like getting Cradle online is pretty interesting. A lot of options here, which is the tough part. I think it's going to be land, hold up endurance. They didn't attack here, which is interesting. Sure. Nothing. Well, I am going to still endurance here. Target them. They let it go. Interesting. I didn't expect that. Go and get dried arbor. Untap. Play grist. I guess I could have tapped the arbor for, for for mana. It's probably still okay. Um, uh, but I don't want to actually use Grist here because of the ability to get it back with Welder. I think we just tick this up. Canopy. Play Mum. Yeah, so definitely a tough one. Hmm. Yeah, this interaction is really strong. They are going to attack, which is interesting. We can block with Endurance. They're most likely to sack it to Brea. Painter Servant. All right. Are they going to Pyroblast? Oh, they are right now as well. All right. Swords is pretty nice, and there's no artifact in the grave, so they can't do shenanigans with it. I think I like just getting rid of the painter now. And then green sunning for scavenging ooze. I 
I could also, yeah, I think that's correct. Just to get that combo off the field is a really nice feeling. I'm also happy to attack with the Knight of Autumn here, if they want to trade with one of these. Because getting it in the bin also means I can then Endurance myself again, to then Green Suns for it again if needed. This also puts more creatures into the bin for Scavenging use to grow it, and start attacking with it as well. On. All right. Probably in Snaring Bridge. In Snaring Bridge. Ah, but Mum just kills the Khan here because we get pro. And then we can hopefully get to a stage where uh, we can wasteland them out of being able to cast spells. Um, the question here is, uh, do I want to draw a card or hold up uh, two, three green with scavenging ooze? I've already played a land. I shouldn't have played a land in case we draw a wasteland. Knight. Okay, it's definitely not nothing. Uh, so I think I respond here. With eating it, just to get it out of the way. This also makes Ooze a 4-4, four four, which means it doesn't die to... Uh, lightning Bolt, <laughs> uh, and also a Braid, which is the big one. But yeah, Ooze being a 4-4 is really nice here. Saga, sure. Okay, so they can Bolt and also Bridge. They probably just Bolt the Mum here to get out of the way. Yeah. Alright. So they have two cards in hand, so we can attack with these two. Um, and I am just going to sack a forest here, get a wasteland, and wasteland the saga. Even though the tomb gives them more mana to like play their hand. Ooh. Sure. We can still draw a prismatic ending as well for the Instrument Bridge, thanks to Birds of Paradise. Come on now, come on now. Um, how do I want to do this? I guess we can go red, white. Yep. 
Yeah. Nice. All right. Painter is a really interesting matchup. Um, I like the mums, I like the swords, I like the mana, especially around Blood Moon. Uh, I don't mind dropping on a library. I, I do like the plagues, just to name Goblin. Uh, I obviously like the Force of Vigors as well. Ramanap's nice, but I think it's a little bit overkill. Beast is quite nice at getting through a lot of their creatures. I think we can just drop out on Thalia's. I don't mind one. I like the Oof, I like the Scoos, I like the Ranger. Pro Blue is pretty funny when they usually name Blue with uh, with Painter. I can probably take out the Caracas. That's pretty good. I don't think I need the Paths, but they're definitely interesting. I don't think Path is better than some of the like Green Suns targets we have. Kai is interesting as well, but again, I'd rather just have the, the creatures that we have. Yeah, better than uh, better than red. That's very true. I should have left the Knight of Autumn in the bin just in case we did need to get to a stage where um, that occurred. Uh, this hand's pretty great. Like we have the basics, which is awesome. Play around Blood Moon. We have removal. We have Wasteland. Yeah, pretty happy to keep this. The small issue is that we can't. Welder, sure. Is Ignoble Hierarch better than both? Interesting. Force of Vig is pretty nice there. I'm just going to lead on Mum. Getting Mum online is pretty sweet. Hey, Rogue Links, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what you play in Legacy? Bolt is fine. Just a pedal. They attack. Plague. Okay. That makes me want to hold this windswept teeth for a black source. So let's just go wasteland into Thalia. I don't mind showing this. I could just go canopy to be fair. I don't think the life loss is that relevant. And hiding the wasteland is quite nice. Tomb. That's fine. They can switch cards here now because of the pedal. Prayer. Interesting. Originally from Portugal, but moved to Switzerland a couple months ago. Very cool. What's the uh, legacy scene like in uh, Switzerland? All right. Haven't been to a game store here yet because of coronavirus. That's very true. We do get to Wasteland next turn. That's pretty nice. I think a green card off the top is just the best because then we can Wasteland and also Force of Vigor and Swords. Painter, sure. Nice. Are they holding up Pyroblast? No. Oh, 
I also like just holding up endurance here, especially if they try to engineer in response. Yeah. We are, I guess, dead to like, uh, like soul land and, uh, grindstone in the three, but that has to be pretty good. Needle. I'm not too sure if I want to use the force. That's the big question. But, uh, being able to force a figure the, the saga is definitely relevant when thinking about what to wasteland. There's also a world there where they don't have the extra land to make the construct next turn if we take them off the tomb. Wasteland. I mean, a land here is fantastic as well. Scoos is pretty good. We get to attack here with both creatures. And then probably just hold up double sword and also force if needed. I think we're in a really good spot. Pedal is okay. Khan. Khan is gonna be fine. They find grindstone, that's interesting. I think I just want to clear the board here. Force pitching screws on painter and needle and then just swords the goblin engineer. And then the Khan goes, we know they have grindstone in hand. We have a backup swords anyway for painter. I think that's just the way we we play this. Yeah, okay. Tough spot for my opponent. We had a really nice curve of Mum and Thalia with Wasteland and then just some reactive spells we didn't really even need. I mean, seeing us win with these cards in hand just really shows how well, like, even Plague, like, just... Yeah, pressuring and also disrupting is really nice, so... Pretty happy with that. Um... I'm going to say mono red painter. And we were on the play. No, on the draw, because they started off with snow covered mountain. Nice. Nice. <sighs> nice touch to the league, which is awesome. Quick shout out, if you guys like this content, uh, definitely consider subscribing. <laughs> uh, this hand is great, I'll keep this. Up against Dan Deluxe. Uh, we are on the play. Uh, and here I'm just gonna go Savannah. Uh, green suns for dried arbor. This means that next turn we cool we can uh, prismatic ending or wasteland a few things. What's it gonna be? We'd love to see like Volk Delva or Volk DRC. Delta? Okay. Hopefully not an underground sea. Hopefully not Doomsday. Oh, okay. Interesting. 
Well, I think I'm happy to clear the board. I could also get the library down. I don't mind ending, especially with the library in hand. I want to maximize the amount of life I actually have to play with. Could be like a Death Shadow deck, playing an Underground Sea, Scalding Tarn. Could just be like Grixis Delver. It is going to be Death Shadow. Delver, sure. Hierarch. All right, let's start with Library. Sure, let's play Hierarch. Nice. Now we can get Ramen Up Wasteland going as well. Thoughtseize. Okay. Pretty good. Thoughtseize most likely taking Ramen Up, which means that Questing Beast is a really nice start. Brainstorm here also means we don't have to worry about like Thoughtseize into Fetch Shock uh, Death Shadow. Oh, wow. Are they not going to cast the Thoughtseize? Surely. Oh. Another Delver. Wow, going full aggro. Hmm. Um... What am I doing this turn? That is the big question. I don't think I'm in a position where I want to ramen up. I think I'm in a position where I want to jam this questing beast. Because with if I draw a land here and pay for, is that greedy? Is it greedy to, to try to get an extra land down here? Hmm. Yeah, I think it is a little bit greedy to like pay for the Hierarch and try to get in. Because the upside of paying for Hierarch here is that it changes it into a two-turn clock with Questing Beast. It also allows me to dig a little bit deeper for a Sword Splashes or Prismatic Ending to deal with these Flyers. But paying four is a big one. They brainstormed and then fetched, so they don't know the top cut of their library either. I don't think it's Canopy. The upside of having Canopy in play is that we get to draw a card without paying life, but we're paying life for it anyway, so I think it's just going to be put on top, put on top. Play a land. Play Questing Beast. Tapping like this, so if this gets countered, we can then just attack with the Dried Arbor. Oof, that's huge. That is so big. But the issue now is, is that uh, they don't have to block with death threat with a with a death shadow if they play it next turn. If this Delver flips, it's huge. If it doesn't flip, it's huge as well. This flip is everything. This flip is the game, pretty much. Ah, oh, it didn't flip. It didn't flip. <laughs> okay, game on. Because a flipped Delver there is just crucial. I wonder if they play Snuff Out. Snuff Out would be quite good on the Beast here. There's a Shadow. Will they just attack with the Insect Elevation? I assume so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Onion Lotus, welcome. Ooh. Hmm. 
they kind of have to block the beast, right, with the with the de with the death shadow. So I think I'd rather just take the. I think I take the canopy here. Because if the Ramanap doesn't resolve, then the canopy can be land for turn, and then I can just draw one to get one deeper. Floating mana. Petty theft? Rough. Well, I guess we still play Canopy and still play Beast and then hold up Caracas. Draw. Dismember. Oh, it's huge. Is that just... That's so close to game. Is, oh, that is game. Why are they allowing us to attack? Oh, they could have dismembered. Waste under the dried up, but we would, we would have had no blocks. So that's really interesting to see. Yeah, dismember the Questing Beast, waste on the Dried Arbor, and then you've paid life for the Death Shadow to grow, and then you have lethal. Merc Tide? Yeah. All right. Hey, Tessero, thanks for the follow. Maybe afraid to plow. Ah, oh, so close. One mana off or one damage off. Sadly, I just don't think we have an out here. The out is make them block with quest with a uh, with Merc Tide, but they don't have to. That's the thing. I guess we can make it harder for them. Play Ramen up. They can't force it because one card is dismember. They could daze it potentially. But yeah, tough. I kind of just have to like see if they block with the Merc Tide. But here they just probably dismember the Questing Beast in our turn. They probably just respond to Exalted Triggers.
Yeah. Tough. Death Shadow. Uh, I like the parts. I like the endurances, looking at that board. Uh, take out Collector Oof. Knight of Autumn. Libraries can definitely be cut. Beast is definitely interesting. They get pretty low. I think I'd rather have some amount of chokes. I don't mind two chokes on the play. I'm going to drop down on a Noble Hierarch, I think. I could see the cradle, the uh, crackers coming out. Although they most likely bring in Plague Engineers, I think having like the ability to play around days as early as possible is really strong. So I think this is pretty good. Kai is definitely interesting, especially on the play. Hmm. I think we'll just see how this goes. Hey, Jib. Yeah, I know Mark's been doing pretty well with uh, Naya post uh, post ban, so I think I should definitely try it out. Blast effects in the board seem really tempting, so. Um, this hand is interesting. I don't think it's good enough. Like one thought sees taking a threat is pretty tough. I'd rather have a lower to the ground hand. It does have removal, but. Hmm. Not for me, not for me. This is much better. I'll keep this in the bottom of the dried arbor. Um, I'm probably not swording turn one, so I'd rather play around like land go with stifle. Ponder. If they shuffle this Ponder, I'm definitely wastelanding the Underground Sea. They chose to not shuffle. That is a... That's the issue with starting on Forest, is now that I can't go, like, play Wasteland, have a White Source, play Mother around days, and then, and then hit them. I think getting Mum here is... Getting Mum online here is better. I'm just going to keep my mana pretty open for now. I actually don't mind just jamming Thalia. If they daze, that's fine. We can then untap and play both Scrib and Mum. And the, the Thalia resolving is just pretty huge. Really taxes them. But yeah, mum definitely the downside of uh, of that. But I guess if we're, if we're going with the turn two Thalia, it doesn't really matter. Domri of the of the water or the spark one, very interesting. Okay. Um, start with attacking. They didn't have days for Thalia last turn, so I'm going to say they don't have days this turn either. I probably want to wasteland my opponent though to keep them off Plague Engineer. That would be pretty brutal. There's also a world where I should actually wasteland the watery grave so they can't like daze the watery grave and then replay it and lose two life. I could have also done that in uh, the end of my combat so they can't float the mana here and then force this. Like they can also snuff out here if they really wanted to. Hopefully they don't have snuff out because that really sucks. Okay, well, that's not too bad. I 
Another snuff out. Thoughtseize. Mm hmm. Do attack. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am going to play that. I think I will just get dried up at end of turn as well. Venison, interesting. Oof, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna play the Grist first. Ah, oh, nice. And then I get an, an attack in first with the Dried Arbor. Oh, I should have played around the snuff out. I didn't know about the third one. I knew about the second one. I didn't think they would have a third. Tough. Should have also kept the Winds of Heat in hand, but that's okay. Ah, oh, they can re respond to the Grist trigger? Okay, that's fair. Isn't it part of the cost? Yeah, you may sacrifice a creature. Maybe that's incorrect. Maybe they can like, is it, I can tick down and then they can do it? Is that how it works? Hey Skate Bear, hey OMG PEI, welcome to the uh, Zenith, hope you're doing well. It's a trigger, okay. What do they do here? Like, it's, <laughs> both of these insects are, are lethal, so. Then we have to block one. Should they have another snuff out? No, they can't. What is it? So, <laughs> it's nothing. Yes, the little insect that could. All right. Uh, I'm pretty happy to go down to one choke on the draw. Hmm. Now this is an interesting one. I don't mind Kaya. It's a little bit tight though, but these games are pretty grindy. I'm going to bring in one library. I like that they don't really have the reach. And I like that if we do have a hand with multiple uh, pieces of removal, we can make use of library. Even just to extend our hand a little bit. I don't mind that. This is game three now. Oh, there is no cost. The creature is, there we go. On the draw, I like uh, I like going down to ch going down on choke and up on library. I wouldn't even mind if library is forced because that's one less force for prismatic ending. But yeah, nice to know that we're not up against like a bolt deck, so I don't mind uh, yeah, having those those libraries. Uh 
a little rough to wasteland, but I am going to keep this just because it's so well positioned at dealing with their threats. All right. Now that's pretty interesting. A lot of options here. I don't really want to show the Savannah uh, and just get it wastelanded. There is a world here where I'm happy just to wasteland the Watery Grave, which is a little bit tough with them already having a delve, but we have so many answers to it that I just want to drill to like a fetch land and have like a plains on the, on the field. There's also a world where our opponent kept a one lander and played Delver over something like Ponder. Fatal push. Yes, they kept a one lander. Really good for us. Um, I think in that case, I'm actually going to try to build out. Or at least take the pressure off the field right now. Because they don't have a wasteland in hand. We know that. So I kind of get a turn here to try to draw into a land to then green suns for dry dubber. Nice. Oh, perfect. Um, in that case, I'm going to green suns for birds of paradise because it gives us uh, black mana. And it's also not a human, which I believe uh, Plague Engineer would most likely go on to first. Opponent up to eight cards. They hit a verdant. Okay. Hey Star Fox, welcome. Needle. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> and they have snuff out. Okay, that's fine. Verdant. Interesting. So we know they have a fatal push. Hey Boyd, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Your meta monkey is gone. That is correct. There is a world where I should have played the land first in case they daze here and then tap the wasteland. I think I should have played the land first. It's definitely correct to play the land first. I didn't play the land first. <laughs> Cause now there's a world where they get, to yeah, exactly. Tough. At least we have the swords for Merktide. Not not distracting at all. It is all good. It is it is all good. We 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 are G. Hmm. We haven't seen Stifle yet. We know one card is Fatal Push. We know about Fatal Push. Yeah, they likely would have dazed anyway. That's very true, Northern Angel. That's a, that's a good point. I think I actually just like land pass and then we have uh, Endurance at, at instant speed. I think if they go end step brainstorm, I ha I'm happy to endurance in response uh, by fetching for most likely a bayou. What do they do? They do brainstorm. Okay. I guess I can also res let it resolve. Um, could just be another Savannah to be fair. 
I think that's actually okay. Yeah. I'm actually going to let this resolve first. Because I want to hit the, the brainstorm as well with endurance. Uh, endurance does not shuffle. Um, there is a world where I want to play around days just by wastelanding this first. I think I will because I was kind of playing around way, kind of playing around um, What's it called? You know what it's called. Stifle. So if they're tapped out, might as well. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, they're brainstorm locked. Oh, that's so, that's just really, really unfortunate for my opponent. Because now we pretty much have lethal because we can use Scrib Ranger to untap the knight. I guess they could have, no, they can't even have snuff out. They need a, they need the, uh, the swamp. Yeah. I mean, we'll take it. Oof, that's, yeah, really tough for Dan. Uh, loss, win-win against uh, blue-black shadow. Delvedek. Nice. They did take a game off us, so that's a big one, but let's go for 5-0. Uh, That'd be pretty sweet. Pretty nice way to come back into to Maverick post-rag. Yeah, the decks felt really nice tonight. Pretty consistent. Um, the sevens have been have been pretty great at having both interaction pressure um, removal, which is good. We've played against uh, Jeskai Control, Rainbow Depths, Mono Red Painter, and Blue Black Shadow, which uh, yeah, nice little mix of decks, which is cool. But yeah, thanks for being in here. Thanks for checking me out. Uh, yeah, if you guys like this content, uh, you should check me out on YouTube. You can find me here. You can take two minutes right now. You can take you can take ten seconds to sub to me on YouTube. Uh, I did just upload a Bant donation Maverick League as well, which is pretty sweet. So if you want to see that, you can find that on YouTube with timestamps, deck lists, everything else in the video description, which is cool. Hey M4CED, thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Just nice to jam some fair decks in Legacy. There's something about it. There's something about the, the feeling of winning with a deck that isn't some sort of, you know, unfair deck or, or blue deck. I, th I I feel like you're already at a pretty big, uh, what's the word? As soon as you aren't playing blue in Legacy, uh, it's a bit of an uphill battle. That's it. So the wins are just that little bit more sweeter. But that's definitely not a case of like if you play blue you just win. That's not a not a thing at all. Yes, disadvantage. That's that's it. There we go. You're at a oh, there's another word for it. Hey Mikhail, thanks for the uh, YouTube sub. Too kind. Always nice to see a, a YouTube sub come up on on stream. Doesn't happen too much, so that's very cool. Deficit. Ah, oh, there's a specific word that I'm just not thinking of. Playing the wrong land can cost you the game. I mean, uh, there are big, there are some big snowball effects. Um, like with Maverick, there's so many, there's so many like you know, uh, game actions you make on turn one to five that end up costing you on turn like you know, eight to twelve, and you know it, you know it came down to that simple uh. <laughs> that simple uh, choice, but uh, yeah, things can just snowball and you can't really do much, but that's why, why magic's so good. Yeah, the one damage loss that one turn, exactly. Like ha making them have to block with the uh, the Merktide Regent by not paying the extra four life. But it is tough as well. Like they didn't have the days, so I guess we could have kept the Noble over the, uh, the land, but always tough, tough. All right, up against Maya, we are on the draw. Um, 
This is an interesting hand because I would say it's close to a mulligan. Um, because you have two cards here that don't really do too much in a lot of matchups. You obviously want Dried Arbor in the deck. Hmm. My opponent has mulligan to six cards. I think this hand is just a little bit too awkward. It's kind of a five. As a five, I'd probably keep it, but I would keep it because I could green suns for dried up a turn one. <laughs> and then know that if I drew into a three drop, I could cast it straight away. So I am going to mulligan this. Uh, this is definitely not better. This is what I would call a yikes. Um, so we are going to go to five. So hopefully the five is better than the five that we had in our seven. <laughs> They're still thinking about their six as well. Welcome to the Lands Mulligan life. <laughs> Close seven into an unkeepable six. Name me a better duo. Nice. I like it. Uh, my opponent has kept six. We're going to mulligan once more. And we're pretty much back to the same one. Uh, let's keep, let's drop the knight. And I, th I think it's the mum here. I think our play is just uh, Savannah Green Sons for Dried Arbor and then have Endurance up. Yeah, I think it's mum that's just like the odd one out here. Hey, Grid GM, good to see you. I played uh, Blue Moon the other night in Highlander and uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, first time playing Highlander Blue Moon with Merc Tide, Ragaban, and Expressive Iteration. And they were really nice. The Merc Tide definitely for finishing out games. I think I have my, mock, my, hand, my deck on Moxfield. Hey, Filthy Casual, welcome. Um, and I was fortunate enough to go uh, 4-0, which is pretty sweet. Highlander, Blue Moon, Swamp, Thoughtseize. Uh, it was Australian Highlander, which is a, a singleton format. Uh, 60 cards based on a point system, uh, not 100 cards. I wonder if this is going to... Yeah, this is probably going to be Reanimator. Uh, which makes Thalia pretty nice. I think here I do want to use the Green Suns just for Dried Arbor. Because there's a world where once we get Thalia down, the Green Suns is just not going to be castable. So, Merktide is a silly card. I, I will definitely say that. What are they thinking about? Swamp into Thoughtseize. I'm going to put them on Black Red Reanimator. But it's interesting that my opponent kept a six that didn't have a turn one reanimate. This is very much looking like an untap faithless looting reanimate style uh, start. So I still think going for Dried Upper here is fine. And then hopefully being able to play Thalia and Wastelander Badlands is like chef's kiffs kind of start and the way that we get back into this game. Jace felt pretty good. Um, I didn't mind it. They do have an Archon. Do they find it? Do they find the reanimate spell? They find Lotus Petal? Oh, we get back the Endurance, I think if they have Exhume. 
What are they doing? Ah, oh, so close. Anime dead. Well, that's not too bad because we have the prismatic... Uh, we have to find another colored source. Hmm. Um, so I guess... I wonder if we just drop the Thalia. We don't have green because the dried up sadly gets sacrificed to the Archon. I think it's just Thalia. Because even if we play the Thalia, they just get to attack and sack it, so... Oh, and they have grief. Yikes. That's tough. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you play the cards in the deck to, to do exactly this, so can't complain too much. Yeah. Tough. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, and I do like the Force of Vigors, because I think that is better than other cards. The libraries are too slow. Uh, Oof isn't relevant. I don't think, uh, just... Just Lotus Petal is a reason to keep it in. Hey, Lord Goyf, thanks for the uh, two months up. Too kind. Uh, I'm really enjoying Legacy Post Ban. I think it's uh, really nice. I think Kaya is too slow, unfortunately. Beast is too slow. I don't mind dropping a Prismatic Ending, although it does hit Animate Dead. Um, there's a world where Force of Vigor is better than Animate Dead because uh, you get to destroy the Animate Dead before the creature comes into play. Yeah, Mum is probably what I want to be dropping here. Especially when Archon is the attacker. Just makes things very tough. And then it's probably Scrib Ranger for that sort of same reason. I think this is pretty good. Grist is still fine as like a way to find removal through Green Suns. Knight of Autumn is still fine at like hitting Animate Dead. A Deafening Silent start would be really nice. This hand isn't too bad either. We have Endurance and Path. So I'm gonna keep this. They kept seven. <laughs> Still a few little one elves, which is nice. Ritual's pretty good. Tomb. You trophy with a fairies version the other day? Very cool. They're gonna go for Grizzle. We will evoke here. Which makes our hand very reactive, which is a little bit tough. Interesting, it's just getting that grizzle brain into play again. Swords is nice.
Okay. Looking for that reanimate spell. That's pretty nice for us because we get to wasteland this uh, Badlands as well. And play Thalia. It's a pretty huge turn. I guess they could have land into reanimate. No. Well, now we can hold up swords or path, which is nice. Whew. But definitely living on the edge here. Really need to draw another endurance. I honestly think with the uh, Force of Vigors in the deck, the Prismatic Endings can most likely go. Because now they get to flashback a looting. Yeah. Come on, Endurance. Noble. Uh, changes things a little bit. It puts an extra creature into the into play, which is nice, and also allows us to still attack for three with Thalia. Hardcast Grief. That is more than fine. I guess I should have plowed in response so they can't gain life off the sword. But at the same time, if we're attacking with a, a first strike creature, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I think getting Knight into play is better than holding up Sword. Just means we have Caracas online as well. Yeah, thankfully now they can't draw off Grizzle, which is nice. Hey, look at Boring, a huge thank you. There isn't a Bog in the deck. Um, I'm not a big fan of Bog without crop rotation or an Elvish Reclaimer style build. Uh, this looks to be lethal, which is nice. Scrubland, green, white, black, blue. Prismatic and Ingrist. And then attack for lethal, all right. Uh, prismatic endings out. I don't mind like Sylvan Library and Oof potentially. I think that is it. Even just having more green cards for endurance is quite nice. I think that's that's just gonna be the changes. The deck is capable of ending on five, which is nice, because you also have birds for uh red mana, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, Scrib's a tough one because it doesn't do a whole lot. I guess it does allow our creatures to untap for extra mana, which can be a thing if we keep like, like a pretty light hand. Yeah, Oof's just tough because I think that although it hits Lotus Petal, a lot of the time my opponent is using Lotus Petal before Oof even hits the field, especially on the draw. So I don't mind Scrib. Scrib can sometimes, yeah, allow us to keep hands that are just quite good. I'd love to see like a deafening silence hand with an endurance and a green card. That's all I want to see. Or double endurance <laughs> and scoos, but it's a one lander. So this is a big question that I've always kind of dealt with. Is this, is this hand just a trap? Because although it does slow down our opponent, it also just doesn't really have a plan other than draw a land and play scoos. But like double endurance is good. 
Yeah, I think like double interaction and swords is just a little bit too good to mulligan. And I think that uh, like we have a pretty high chance of drawing either a Mana Dork, a Green Suns for Dried Arbor, or a land off the first two turns that we can get a Scooze into play that I'm happy to keep this and see how it goes. But Boyd, I can definitely see it. Like I'm not a big fan of keeping one landers, but in this case, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, thankfully I haven't seen too much therapy, which is nice. But obviously, like, take swords here, then, like, therapy uh, endurance would be pretty brutal. Uh, please, don't, don't be a chance, don't be a, a world of, like, you say it and then it happens. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> a little bit worried there. All right. Come on, land. Nice. Obviously, I don't want to play this land because it is currently an unknown card to my opponent. For all they know, it could be Surgical Extraction. Looks like they want to looting again. Unmask. That's fine. They have two cards left in hand. They take the ooze. Yeah. I mean, that is like a turn two play, so I can definitely see why. Swords. Still pretty nice. I think if they try to go off here, we just pitch the Knight of Autumn. Yeah, Dried Arbor here could be a good one. Force of Vigor, interesting. That's pretty dire for them, which is great for us. They have one card left in hand. A land here is just so good because it allows us to hold up hard cast. Ah, oh, so close. Um, I think I get in for two here instead of holding up swords to plowshares. I think that's fine. If I was going to SEG uh, Philly, I think this list is pretty, pretty good. Um, I've definitely been like toying with it for a few weeks now. Um, the big question is, do you want to play Gadok Teague? That's the big one. Thalia. Here we're just holding up Endurance. Um, so I actually don't mind going. This is actually pretty interesting because I, I could, 
endurance now um, to not discard, but I think I'd rather just discard. Because I don't want endurance now and then them have like entomb, thought seize, and then something else potentially. Like with four cards, they could they could potentially do something weird. Yeah. I think it's just gonna be the grist here. They could have like land into grief. That also changes things. Yeah, now we're in a, a really good spot. I probably like don't mind playing Thalia here as well. Hmm. Could also play the Knight, which will be a 3-3, three, three, and then start getting Wasteland online. Could have played Thalia last turn, for, for sure. I think I was just overthinking what they could have to beat double R Endurance. I kind of like just passing. Hmm. They're at 11. We have a three turn clock. Thalia changes it to a two turn clock. It turns off the, the Bloodstained Mire potentially. So I think playing the Thalia here is okay. They didn't have a line land last turn and it's hard for them to do like, I guess they could go Grief, Pitch Card. Yeah, I think I actually think Thalia here is, is more than fine. It's tight. Like if they have like what they need to beat endurance here, they could have it, but I, I think it's okay here. Hey, it's on me. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, thankfully playing for the trophy, which is quite nice. Yeah, they need a really good five or some sort of sweeper. Nice. Very cool. Pretty tough spot for them. Especially to, to get through the Thali attacks as well. Hmm. But hey, cool to get the trophy. Uh, I'm going to call that Black Red Reanimator. Whew. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Um, deck was sick. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I mean, looking back at changes, um, the only change I made was actually taking out Gadok Teague because I didn't think it was really there. Hey, Boyd, a huge thank you. A huge thank you. I hope, hopefully I see you soon for beers and something. Go for dinner or something. That'd be very cool. Yeah, even if they get a creature on the board, it's pretty tough because we have good outs for Archon in Path to Exile. Um, we have like multiple creatures to, to attack with as well, which is cool. So yeah, nice to get the uh, the trophy and a good mix of decks as well. Um, thoughts, thoughts. Let's go back to deck tech. Um, we didn't see Kaya, but I do like it. Um, I think just like getting more reps with Kaya is good. I, I really like that Kaya just gives the deck a lot of value. Um, and it's just a hard to deal with threat for some opponents. Um, so for those of you who are unaware of Kaya, she's a four mana walker. Uh, for zero loyalty, you can exile her or up to one target creature. So either yours or your opponents. And then you return it at the uh, beginning of your next upkeep. So it kind of plays around any sorcery speed stuff during their turn, which is nice. Uh, it allows you to reset Kaya back to five, which is cool. 
it allows you to uh, reset Knight of Autumn or Plague Engineer, which is pretty sweet. Uh, the Neg 2 straight away is just card advantage because your opponent has to discard and you gain a card, which is pretty great. So she replaces herself. Um, the Drain can be relevant uh, and the Life Gain can be relevant as well, but probably less so than the other abilities. But yeah, I really like that she can also just uh, allow you to kind of play around things like Supreme Verdict if you have like one threat on the board, like a big Knight. She does play into Containment Priest, which is a little bit annoying because that is a card that is predominantly brought in against Maverick from like blue white XX. So that's pretty tough. It can also remove the counters from a Merc Tide. That's a really nice one. Um, three mana Kaya is also nice at eating graveyards, dealing with like pesky creatures. I don't mind it even against like blue red Delva, even with how aggressive they are. Um, just a little bit easier to deal with uh, through prismatic ending. So that's why I kind of like the Kaya. Also the discard is pretty good. Like I'm happy to bring this Kyra in against like any sort of Stoneblade deck, um, perhaps even Elves because the game gets a bit more mid-rangey post board. Um, just the ability to like make your opponent you know discard twice and then you draw twice is pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. Also kills yeah uh, Saga tokens. That's a great one, which is really nice. Any sort of token, even if they go for like a a Merit Lage for some reason at sorcery speed, it can be pretty sweet. So. Yeah, I think Kai is just my choice of Planeswalker, just to like change up the uh, threat density from all creatures to a mix of creatures and Planeswalkers. Like Grist is also really good at, at just uh, grinding out games, but I think in, in this list, I would say where I would probably say the flex slots are, are the fifth Manatork, the extra Prismatic, if not all Prismatics. Um, the second Endurance in the main deck. I'm not playing Outland Liberator in this version because we have the Collector Oof and Knight of Autumn for Green Sun's targets for those. And we also have the three Prismatic Endings. Um, and I felt that with Force of Vigors in the board, that we didn't need the Outland Liberator, that the flexibility of ending was better. But yeah, that's about it. Um, a huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. Very cool to, yeah, just got a pretty, pretty chill 5-0. Um, and it'll be good to run this back again. Ah, uh, Fajita, yes, Roaring Earth. Uh, so this is a card that was recently printed in Kamigawa Neon Destiny, which uh, is a two mana enchantment. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle you control. And then for channel, you can discard it for X and two green. Put X plus one plus one counters on target land you control. It becomes a zero zero green spirit creature with haste. It's still a land. Uh, definitely an interesting card. It, it's tough because it does rely on other things. It relies on you having a creature in play and also a land entering the battlefield. Um, it's also tough to know where you would put this in the deck because you probably don't want to take out a creature. You don't want to take out a removal. So it's probably in the spot of like Sylvan Library-esque. But um, I think if I was going to play something like this, I would probably rather just play Felidar Retreat in the sideboard um, because it just does a little bit more. It still relies on lands, but it also gives you the ability to create creatures or buff big creatures. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough in legacy because it, it does nothing on its own, which is really tough. And the, the channel effect is, is pretty expensive for what it is. Um, so I probably wouldn't touch it, but it is pretty cool, especially with Knight. Uh, another card that's pretty good with Knight is the Robin Hood deck in modern that used to see play with the blue enchantment. Uh, I always forget what it's called but it kind of does the other thing. Oh, what's it called? It allows you to untap a, a creature when a land comes into play. Retreat to Coral Helm. Yeah, I think uh, Fujita, if you want to do something like that in, even in Legacy, I could see some sort of like Bant Maverick list with Retreat, um, which is pretty cool. It used to have a win con with, I, I believe Wolf Run. You'd float mana and then go, go for Wolf Run, which is pretty awesome. Um, 
I think the big card that I'm looking out for from Neo Destiny is definitely the green land that has channel. Just because it allows you to, yeah, get around any sort of counter magic, which is pretty huge. Uh, have I ever tried Esper Sentinel? I haven't in Maverick. I have played it in uh, like Sprout's Green White De Depths list, uh, which is here. So this was a version of Green White Depths that uh, won a Legacy Challenge, I'm going to say a month ago. That is pretty uh, artifact heavy. It plays main deck sphere effects. It plays the Esper Sentinels. And then it plays a Saga package with Mox Diamonds uh, and also some of these. So that's a pretty cool spot. Um, I think if you're going to play like a fair deck with Esper Sentinel, then there's another version running around that uh, I played against yesterday that looked pretty sweet. Uh, that was playing a bunch of artifacts and an artifact that like a creature that's a, a two mana one one that when it enters play you get to look at the top four put an artifact into your hand and whenever an artifact comes into play it gets plus one plus one counter and just keeps growing a little bit like luminarch aspirant which is very cool so that could be a pretty cool start but i think it's 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 tough with esper sentinel i do like it in thalia builds ingenious slith nice autonomy there we go uh but yeah, like even humans, because you can actually grow the power of Esper Sentinel. I don't mind that. But uh, yeah, haven't tried it in, in Mav. All right, that is me. Uh, thank you so much to the new subs, the new followers. Uh, you are very much appreciated. Uh, I'll be back soon, I assume. Uh, Sylvie is actually streaming, which is sweet, who is a very well-known Japanese uh, Delver player. I hope you guys enjoy. So uh, you are more than welcome for the stream. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, take care. Enjoy your weeks. Have fun. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.